Jason Johnson is a LeBron guy, so I just want to start off by asking you, uh, now that LeBron is out, uh, who have you pledged your allegiance to? Uh, who, 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 who are you riding with in these NBA in playoffs now that LeBron's out? So, as, as a verified and confident and well-spoken sports hater, I will now root for no one. I will simply dislike teams to a lesser degree who are still left playing. And I suspect that this year it's going to be the New Jersey Nets versus the Los Angeles Clippers, two teams of malcontents who can never get anything done when they had fantastic teams behind them, except for Kawhi, and even Kawhi underachieved last year. And I think in the end, the New Jersey Nets will win, which will be the end of good basketball because we'll show them all you have to do to get a bunch of grumpy guys who left really good teams to get together and play, and they'll end up winning the championship. That is my guess. Why are you calling them New so Jersey? You don't even. You call you them don't New even, Jersey on purpose. I'm about to say you don't even. I'm calling them New Jersey, Jersey on purpose. They, they, I'm calling New Jersey on purpose because okay. they're the New Jersey Nets. Ain't New York, ain't no, no, ain't no real New Yorkers claiming them. None that I know. No, no real New Yorkers I know claim them. The New York team is the Knicks, it's the Jets, it's the Giants, it's the Rangers. New Jersey is, they're, they're the worst kind of gentrifier. The worst kind of gentrifier. But I suspect they're going to win. I mean, the way, look, Giannis, I, I've always questioned whether Giannis really is a, a, a great MVP level guy or if he's just a regular season person. They go up to and then he gets completely shut down by Kyrie. He's being shut down by Kevin Durant, who, again, is one of the best players ever, but he's not getting it done. 18 points ain't going to get it done. It's going to be the Nets. They're going to march on through, whether they have James Harden or not. And it'll be a very interesting finals as we see an amazing stat line from Kyrie. There's an amazing stat line from Kawhi where he goes like 48-2 and two the whole time, and playoff P gives us like a 2-for-18 game. So Mike, Why don't you just go ahead and call hey, the Clippers the, the, the Buffalo Braves or the – or, or, or the San Diego Clippers while you're at it. I mean, if you're going if, if to keep, if you're going to do the slander thing, just, just go all the way with it. I'm really just looking, I'm looking for the close series at the end and then a bunch of myths and, and a bunch of gifts and memes of like the Lombardi, uh, not the Lombardi, the Naismith trophy, like stepping over Tyrone Lou, right? Like that's what I want to see. I want to see the trophy stepping over Tyrone Lou. The O'Brien like trophy? Iver yeah, yeah, you know, Brian, I, why, why am I getting this one? You know, Brian Trophy just stepping over him. Because I think he's going to get that team far. They've got too much talent. And I don't think anybody else in the Western Conference, I don't think Chris Paul's shoulder, I don't think the rest of that team can hold up. I don't think the Suns can hold up and do it. If it ends up being a Suns Clippers, I think it's going to end up happening. But they're going to get blown out by the Nets. I don't think anyone stops this New Jersey Nets team uh, when they finally get to the NBA Finals. And, you know, I'll be... Highly, highly oh disappointed. <laughs> so, hey, so hey, 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 now, gosh. now, wait, hold on. Now, Mike Smith, Mike Smith. I know, cause, or, or is it just for me? Now, th th this is where you start acting different when company comes over. You know, like you, you, you got a house, you got a house full of yellers, and then a company comes over, and you're sitting there, you're like, yeah, yeah, no, no. This man, before you came in the house, was giving me a hard time. About the Brooklyn Nets. I'm called Brooklyn. I ain't gonna call him out of the name. He's giving me a hard time about the Brooklyn Nets. All your takes, all this stuff is being exposed. And you come in and he's being all nice. He's letting you put uh he's no. letting you put your drink on the table without a coaster. He didn't tell you to take your shoes off like he tells everybody else. What's up, man? Jason What's going on? Jason's, 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 Jason's sand slander was much more subtle. And I heard Jason acknowledge that the Nets are going to win. That yes. you haven't gone, you haven't okay. gotten there. Like he, I, might, I, he, I, might, I, he I, had all kinds of backhanded things to say about him. He didn't say they weren't going to win. He doesn't like him, he but he not, him he's New not Jersey. in denial like he you even, are. He didn't even this, come in denial. Fine. But it, but he's not in denial. He didn't even, he's not in yeah, denial. He's acknowledging who they are. I can't. I, can't I ain't call him out the name. They are, in they are who we thought we were. And they, unfortunately, and no one's going to let them off the hook. They're going to stop through. I mean, maybe it'll take five games to get past the Milwaukee Bucks because G, Giannis doesn't have a number two, and he's not really strong enough to be a number one and handle this game. But when Harden went out, who I think was the most critical part of that team, and grumpy old Kyrie and malcontent Kevin Durant can continue to just score at us. And trust me, 
Nothing about them makes me happy. Nothing. I don't like the idea that Steve Nash got that job. I don't like the idea of Mike D'Antoni being anywhere near an NBA Finals. I don't like Blake Griffin, who hasn't jumped over a Kia in four years, being able to backdoor his way into this championship by playing a level of defense that Chris Paul never saw. All of those things deeply offend me as a basketball fan. But unfortunately, I cannot deny... And Kevin Durant... And Kevin Durant is the malcontent, and they're yes, grumpy. Kevin, Kevin Not Jason Durant Johnson. They're, no, I mean, no, like, cause no, I, I, there's, no, I heard a lot of grumpiness in just the last ten I, seconds from you. <laughs> Who's grumpier than you? The irony I, is that you got some nerve calling somebody I, else grumpy I, and, and I, a malcontent, where you're like, I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I can't believe it. You know, like, so much about them bothers me. It's like, okay, but they're grumpy. Like, okay. I am I am the get off my lawn guy of, of brother from another. I will come and complain about all these people, all of these people on my lawn. <laughs> all of them. Just just go. I ain't got no cotton candy for them. I ain't got no Halloween candy. Nothing. But I have to look. I look at Kevin Durant, and like I said, I don't care what kind of championship that they may wiggle into this year, backdoor into this year. It's just like winning a championship when 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 uh, when Michael Jordan was playing baseball and then retired. It ain't gonna count. Stop it. It's a half a Stop championship. It. Stop it. Stop it. You didn't not, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, got, a, you got a lot of leeway. You got a lot of leeway, obviously. Mikasa is Sukasa, okay? You come in, you make yourself at home. You don't, you don't have to wipe. You don't, you, don't, you don't grind your feet in our couch. You don't grind your feet in Eddie Murphy's couch, but you don't have to take, necessarily take your shoes off. And Michael's right. Don't worry about the coaster. You're good. You, you know where the fridge is. What we're not going to do is we're not going to discredit Hakeem Olajuwon, my starting center and my all-time starting five. We are not going to discredit the back-to-back -back championships from Hakeem Olajuwon. It ain't my business or the dreams business what Michael Jordan decided to do with his free time, okay? I'm, but I'm we are not, not going to say, we're not going to fix an asterisk next to the, <laughs> that's what you just did. I heard you just now. I, you I, said it don't count. I, I, heard, I heard the words coming out of your mouth. I, the, the words that I directly said are, he won the championship. He won two back-to-back -back championships, which is an accomplishment, but he didn't have to face Michael Jordan, which says something about the championships they won because everybody else who faced Michael Jordan ended up losing. So, look, we could call it an asterisk. We could call it half a bit. We could say that, you know, it's like winning the Grammys when, when Leonardo DiCaprio is on vacation or winning the Oscar. However you want to play it, he didn't have to face Michael Jordan in those finals. If he faced Michael Jordan in yeah, those finals, I would look at it differently. See, here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. I, I, I'm going to come to Mike's defense on this. And look, you can you can say well, that was because I'm, I'm okay, <laughs> but but okay, okay. Forget about your defense. Forget about your defense. I'm going to come in and be the fact checker here because the facts okay. have have just gone away on this one. It's gone away. Now, this is what most people say. Most people say Michael Jordan was playing baseball for two years, and in those two right. years. Akeem Olajuwon won championship. That's not what happened. Michael no, he Jordan came back. came back. He came back. He was in the playoffs. Right. They yes. lost to Orlando. They lost. The they lost. Yeah. And yeah. and Olajuwon destroyed Shaq in the Magic yes. in the yes. playoffs. In, yes, in the first did. one. Yes. Okay, so look, I, I, it ain't his fault. And in the second well, one, I was just saying. In the second one. First one, yeah, Jordan's gone. The second one, Jordan was back. He was back. He was, Don't come back. He was, just, he, was just, he was just coming back. Like I said, the game is still what a great that? center. He didn't face the best competition. I'm just saying, sometimes you luck out. And I, and I, I think if you get if you get to go, if you get to go against Kawhi Leonard, who 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 is a great player when he decides to be about 43 games out of the year, uh, and you don't have to face Steph and you don't have to face LeBron, and you don't have to face some of the more quality teams out there, I will look at your championship somewhat different. And, and look, this is my whole thing about Kevin Durant and Kyrie, and to a certain extent, James Harden. Kyrie is slightly different, but I look at Dark Harden, and I look at Kevin Durant, and these are both players that had fantastic teams where they were the best player on those teams and never got it done. Harden always flaked out. I mean, he was, he was playoff H. He always disappeared in the playoffs, and there were years where he should have been able to get past Golden State Warriors and never could do it. Kevin Durant had a 3-1 lead, a 3-1 lead on the Golden State Warriors, choked it all the way at the end.
None of these guys, when they have been the best player on a team, could ever get anything done. So you got a whole bunch of glorified number twos on some level joining together so they can finally get a championship because they couldn't do it when they were actually the man on their own team. That's why I look at them questionable. That's, that's my whole All thing. Right. Hey, I Jason. think Ka Kawhi actually took that responsibility on with the Toronto Raptors. He was the man. He did it. He got it done. It was close, but he got it done against a highly weakened right. Golden State Warriors. All right, Doc Johnson, uh, since you already grumpy, despite that dope shirt you got on, shout out to boys. I mean, great shirt. Uh, since you're already grumpy, I might as well uh, get bring in a topic that will get you even grumpier. Joe Biden seems oh, determined to be so bipartisan favorite. Joe. Bipartisan Joe. Um, why is he doing this? And can he be the first person in the history of politics to make it work? Bipartisanship. No, it sounds no, good, no. but nobody's made it work yet. No, under, under no sort. This is this is honestly this like y'all saw my my joy had joy had just left my body. It has left my body and released into the ether. But I have to talk about the nonsense that is Joe Biden under these current circles, and not just Joe Biden, but I think way too many Democrats in general. Here's the thing. I walk around, I walk around this, this wonderful, soon to be maskless in a year America that we're in. I hear people talk about taxes, they talk about immigration, they talk about COVID. I have never once in my travels throughout this country ever heard anyone say, I want bipartisanship. Who are these mysterious people who want bipartisanship? No one ever says that. What you hear from regular voters is, I want Congress to get things done. They don't care how it gets done. They don't care if it's one party rule. They just want to see things get done. So when Joe Biden says, I want to have a bipartisan way of working together with people, it doesn't make any sense. When Joe Manchin comes out and says, I want to be bipartisan with people, and it never seems to make any sense one way or another, I don't believe it. At least in the case of Joe Manchin, I know it's because he's got Koch brothers money in his pocket right now because he's just a hypocrite. In the case of Joe Biden, I don't know what he's thinking. I have no idea what he's thinking. And, and for him to sort of speak in this way as if you can work with people who are committed to knocking you out of power, not electorally, but literally having you killed, it doesn't make any sense. And I think to the degree that Democrats believe that they can work with a Republican Party that wants them dead, like, I mean, remember, these are the guys who are cool with trying to kill Mike Pence. Uh, the Democrats are losing. They're going to stay losing, stay losing. And Joe Biden, unfortunately, seems to believe in an idealistic way of government that none of us have ever lived long enough to see. Quick follow up to that. Speaking of hang Mike Pence, 127 page uh, one six report. Any revelations or takeaways as I work my way through it? Any re revelations or takeaways that surprised you that stood out something you didn't know that it made you, you know, uh, consider something differently or, it, or or at all that you didn't before or it's all just telling us what we already know. It is, it is really interesting. It's sort of like can you imagine, like, what was it, 10, 12 years ago uh, when, when they, they had all the sort of scandals in, in uh, first the Tour de France and then in baseball? Can you imagine a huge report that the MLB releases where they don't say steroids? Can you imagine a huge report yeah. about yeah. cheating in the Tour de France and they don't say doping? And the fact that the Republicans wanted to take out the word, they don't want to use the word insurrection. They don't want to use the word insurrection in a report where people were trying to take over the country just shows how weak the Democratic Party is in their attempt to have bipartisanship. I I've always said this, like the country can't heal if we can't even agree on what the diagnosis of what made us sick is. And if you've got people who literally don't even want to use the word insurrection, how much deeper is that lie going to be buried in every single action that they want to engage in from now on? I I'll tell you all, like I am legitimately apprehensive about what the future of this country will be in the next year and a half. And Joe Manchin coming out this week and saying, like, I'm not going to do anything uh, for the, the, you know, I'm, I'm not going to vote on these, these sort of uh, voting reform bills, et cetera, et cetera. And bear in mind, he was an original co-sponsor of the For the People Act. So he's literally going back on legislation that he thought was fine two years ago. This is the kind of hypocrisy and white supremacy is going to have us all suffering under some brand new theocratic regime led by uh, Mitch McConnell in two years. You ain't see ish because you was doing ish uh, before we uh, before we let you go because we got uh, we got more company coming up real quick as we go to break man. First impressions of Loki. I peeked at it. Haven't made it through the episode but real quick as we go to break. 
I, I basically it feels like an American version of Doctor Who in the best way possible. And that legitimately, legitimately excites me. And I'll tell you all this. So this this upcoming Saturday, I'm guest hosting for Tiffany Cross on Talks Connection, uh, 10 to 12 on MSNBC. I'm actually going to have the showrunner for Captain America and the Winter Soldier at the end. And I get to tell him all of the somewhat problematic things I thought about the black Captain America. So it should be a very interesting conversation that we're going to have. No, so, so this is Malcolm Spellman going to be on with you. Yes, yes. He pitched the show. We're supposed okay, to have great. him on for my final segment yeah. on Saturday. Great. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right. Hopefully Sounds I don't good, get more. We'll right, talk brother. to you next week. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.